Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you guys how to add uh, weapons to your Unreal characters and attack animations. This is perfect for game devs or for creating cinematics for Unreal Engine. So I'm going to build this on our previous Unreal character video, so if you haven't watched that or you don't already have an Unreal character set up, go ahead and go watch this video right here. You're also going to need an attack animation, so go over to Mixamo and grab one, maybe two or three, however many you want. I recommend that you keep them kind of simple though, so no spin attacks, no combos, just a simple swipe or a punch or something like that. And then lastly, you need weapons, and luckily we just converted some of our pre-existing medieval weapons into Unreal Engine. So if you go over to the Unreal Marketplace, you can see they're actually just right here, and you can click buy now and download them and it'll install it right to the project. If you already are a pro member, we've got you covered. We uploaded these to the render crate store. If you did download these weapons directly from the render crate store, here's how you install it. Once you've created your Unreal project, go ahead and go to where it's saved and open it up and you should see a content folder in there. Just drag and drop the weapons right into the content folder like this. And now the next time you open it, the weapons will just be there. So if you followed along with our previous character video, we're picking up right where that left off. Let me show you. Now it's not the superhero character, I actually used our skeleton character because I just wanted some variety. But you can see it's all the same. He runs around, if I hold down shift, he'll sprint. And if I right click, he walks just like the superhero character from before. Now if you go into your content browser, just to double check, we should see that the weapons have installed and they're right here. We can double click on one and take a look. So now we need to attach it to our character. You'll notice this time around, I actually picked animations where it looks like he's holding something because the previous animations we made in the uh, previous video, his arm was just kind of down to the side. It didn't really look like he was holding something. So I swapped him out for animations where the character's holding something in his hand. So I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna navigate to my skeletal mesh that's right here. It's the one with the pink line under it and it says skeletal mesh. So if you open that up, this is where you can look at all the bones in your character's rig. I'm gonna go down and find his right hand bone. Now it's called that because I'm using the Mixamo skeleton. If you're using some other skeleton, it might have a different name, but it's, it's his right hand. So here it is. And I wanna right click on that and click on add socket. And we can name this socket, it's probably a good idea. So I'm gonna name this weapon socket. You can call it whatever you want. If you have a two-handed weapon or two different weapons, you can call it left hand socket, right hand socket, whatever you want. And you can put a socket on any bone. So if you want him to have a shield on his back or a hat or anything like that, you can put a socket on any bone. So I'm gonna right click on my socket down here and I'm gonna to go to add preview asset. And I'll just type in sword just to grab one of the swords we just created. And we can see that it's not really lined up with how it should be in his hand. So this is our opportunity to get it positioned just right. Something to keep in mind, this is just a preview. It's not actually connected to him yet. It's just showing what it will look like when it is connected so that we can get it positioned just right. So I'm just gonna move this down into his hand. Don't worry that he's not gripping it. I just wanna put it sort of floating in his palm. And if you're doing a game and it's got multiple different weapon types, you can actually have a different socket for each weapon so that they all fit perfectly in the hand. But just to keep it simple, we'll just have this one socket right here. So I'll go ahead and save the asset and I'll close it. And again, if I press play, I can see he's not holding the sword because that was just a preview. Let's go actually attach it to his body. So this time I'm gonna go into my content folder, go into the third person folder and go into blueprints. And here's the BP third person character. It's the third person character blueprint that comes comes with Unreal Engine. Now if we click on viewport, we can see in the previous video, we already swapped it out with our character. So that's why we see the skeleton here or your superhero or whatever. And I need to attach a static mesh, one of those swords to this skeleton. So I'm gonna go over here to the left and go add static mesh. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it weapon. And this needs to be parented to the skeleton. So I'm gonna drag and drop this onto the skeletal mesh right here, where it's called mesh character mesh right here. Notice now it's nested underneath that, but it doesn't really know which part of the skeleton to follow. So over here under the details, we wanna search for sockets. See this one that says parent socket. Um, if you can't find it, you can always type in socket like that, but it's right here. And I'm gonna click search and I'll choose my weapon socket. Again, if you don't see it, you can search for it. So now we have this thing floating that's kind of following his hand. Right now it's nothing, it doesn't have a mesh attached to it. So I'm gonna go over here to static mesh and choose the arming sword. Notice it's not really connected. We took all that time to line it up and it's not where it should be. For some reason, Unreal Engine just adds these strange transform values right here. So I'm just gonna click these little arrows to reset it to default and it should pop into his hand. Now what's really cool is if you have multiple weapons like we do, you can actually switch this out for a different one. So let's do the ax and you can even adjust this. So let's say we have the ax, but it's not quite sitting the same way as the sword. We can actually go here and adjust these values to make it sit right where we want it inside the hand. But I'm gonna go back to our arming sword because that's the one I like. You can actually scale it too if it's not the right size. Now we got a little bit bigger sword. I'm gonna press compile and save. And we'll press play to test it out. Nice. So now he's got a sword in his hand. 
Uh, now the problem is when we click, he doesn't do anything. So the next step is going to be to add the animations in. Okay, so I've actually gone to Mixamo and I've picked out five attack animations that I like. One will do, but I just like to go above and beyond. So here are my five animations and I'm just going to drag these into the content browser to import them. And it's always important to not import the mesh. And also very important, you want to pick the target skeleton. So we don't want this to go onto the default mannequin. We want it to go onto our skeleton character. So I'll click that and press import all. All right, so here's what one of them looks like. At this point, you can actually edit these animations if you want to. So this actually is kind of slow for a game. It would feel very sluggish. So I'm actually going to go over here to rate scale and let's try one and a half speed. So a little bit faster. We can try two, but that's probably too fast. So this is where you can dial in the feel of your game. If you want it to be really quick and snappy, like Street Fighter, you can really speed it up. If you want it to feel more slow and more realistic, like The Witcher, then keep it how it was captured with the motion capture suit. I'm gonna to go to 1.5 and you can even trim it. If you want a really quick and snappy, instant response sort of feel, you can actually trim off all the frames until right before he's about to swing. I think I'm gonna trim off just a little bit here. So I'm gonna to scrub to where I wanna cut. So I'm actually gonna right click and go remove frame zero from 246. So it's just gonna cut off a little bit of the lag in the beginning. And then at the end of the attack, I can see that he kind of goes back to neutral about right there, but then there's still a lot more of just kind of moving his body and not doing much. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of that too. And let's watch our finished animation. So a little bit quicker. It's going to feel a little bit more responsive when our players play our game. I'm going to really quickly do that to all the other animations. All right, I got my animations sped up and trimmed up. They're ready to go. To make this work, we're actually going to have to right click and convert them into animation montages, just the attack animations. So here, this attack animation, I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go create anim montage and I'm gonna name this animation montage one. Okay, and I'll do that for each of the animations. Okay, so I've got five animation montages now, one through five. I'm gonna go ahead and save them. And now to get this to work, we need to edit our animation blueprint. So um, right here, I'm gonna click on anim BP skeleton. And if you watched that previous video, this should look familiar. This is where our state machine plugs into our output pose. I need to create what's called a default slot to get this to work. I'm going to put this in between. All this does for us is it allows us to play animation montages on top of the default movement animations that we already created. Just kind of hijacks it. So I'm going to click compile and save. So right now nothing's going to happen. We have to actually set up the input, which is going to be the left mouse click or whatever you want it to be. So let's set that up too. Let's go to the third person blueprints and I'm going to go to BP third person character. If you remember this window, it's where we attached our sword to our skeleton. But if we go to event graph and find an empty space, usually kind of near the bottom, this is where we can set up inputs. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in left mouse button. So this red thing is called an event and the event is when the player clicks on the left mouse button, it's going to play the animation montage. So let's go out from the pressed execution pin and I'm going to search for animation montage. Play anim montage right here. And I'm going to say under anim montage select asset, I'm going to choose just my first montage, the first attack. And I'll hit compile and save. So now when I press play and I click, I can see he does the attack, which is really cool. Now we have a problem. When he's running, you can see it overrides his legs animation too. What we need to do is we need to make it so only the top half of his body plays the montage and the bottom half plays the default animation. So I'm going to press escape and here's how we set that up. I'm going to go back to my animation blueprint, NMBP skeleton. And what we need to do is we need to blend between this default slot, which is the montage playing and the state machine, which is the legs moving. So I want the montage to play on his top half and the legs to play on the bottom half. So here's how we set that up. I'm going to create a pose. So out from the state machine, I'm going to drag and I'm going to search for pose. I'm going to click on new save cache pose and it's got a random number attached to it. So we can just call this walking animation. So once I've created that, I'm going to right click and search again for cache and where it says use cache pose walking. I've got this thing now and I'm going to plug this into our default slot. I'll press compile and save. And right now we haven't actually changed anything. All we've done here is we've kind of created like a little teleport machine. So you can see our walking animation is going into this cached pose and then it's coming out of the cache pose into here. So really nothing's different. We just kind of created like a little teleport for the information to flow. If we were to press play, nothing would look different though. But now we need to blend these two things together. So I'm going to go search for layered blend per bone. So what we need to do is you can see here we've got an input for two poses and what we can do is we can plug two different animations into the different slots and then choose a bone and that point will be where it splits. So if we choose the center of the chest, then from that point up, the arms will move and, and he'll play the attack animation and from that point down, 
the legs will move. Or we could pick the elbow for some reason if we want just the elbow to play the attack animation. So it's totally up to us. But let's get that plugged in. First thing I want to do is take this, these two here, and I'll plug this into the bottom slot. Blend pose zero. And then I'm gonna search again for that cache pose. So I'm gonna search for use cache pose walking. And then I'll lastly plug this into our output pose. Let's press compile and save. So that might've been a little bit confusing, but let me just explain what's going on. Remember the cache pose walking is just the default walking animation that we already set up and it's flowing into here. And then this part that we set up, if you remember is the walking pose, but it can be overridden by that attack animation. That's what this slot does. So we've got one version of the animation that's just him walking and one version where he's doing the attack. And this green node here is gonna let us blend it together. Let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go over to layer setup, open up this index here, and where it says branch filters, I'm gonna click on the plus sign and then open that up. So what we've done is we've said we wanna pick one spot where the animations branch. So what we need to do where it says bone name, we need to pick the bone where above it, it's going to play the attack animation and below it is gonna play the legs. Now, if you're using the Mixamo skeleton, that's called spine with a capital S. If you don't know which bone or what it's called, you can actually go into your skeleton right here. It's the, the one with the pink line and just go find the name of the bone kind of right above the hip bone. So again, right here, you can see the hip bone is right here in the pelvis and right above that, the next joint up on this skeleton is called spine. On your skeleton, it might be called something else. Make sure you name it exactly the same. So what we're saying is here, above the spine bone, it's going to play the attack animation. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'll press play and I'll click. Okay, he's doing what we expect. And if I run, his legs keep moving and he's playing the attack animation. Now we do have another problem here that we need to fix and it's very easy to fix, but let me show you. If I make it so he's facing right at the camera and I attack, you can see he's not really attacking forward. And the reason for that is if we look at the animation, you can see the animation we picked, he's kind of leading with his hips and he's twisting his whole body, but we've locked the hips in place so they don't move. And so his upper half doesn't quite go into alignment for the attack anymore. So he's kind of attacking off to the side. So here's how we fix that, pretty easy. So I'm gonna go back into my animation blueprint, NMBP. This is where we just were. I'm gonna click back on that green node where we blended the bones. And there's a little checkbox that says mesh space rotation blend. And I'll just turn that on and I'll hit compile and save. And let's test it now. So again, if I turn the camera so he's facing right at us and I press attack, you can see now he's attacking us. And basically what happened is it added a little bit more rotation to his upper body to account for the fact that his hips aren't moving anymore. So now the attacks should line up. Okay, cool. So we're almost done. One problem I wanna solve now is he'll start the attack animation as quickly as you can click the mouse like this. So you can make it look like he's angry, he's kind of shaking a stick, you crazy kids. But obviously that's not how we want our game to play. So what we wanna do is delay it so you can't attack until maybe a second later or maybe we tell it to wait until the animation's done. It really depends on how you want your game to feel, but here's how we set that up. Let's go back up into our blueprints, BP third person character. And right here, this is where we just were a few minutes back where we set up the left mouse button to play the montage. I'm gonna put something in in between this called do once so we'll just put that in between okay and what this means is once the action happens it kind of closes the gate and you can't do it again but we want it to reset after the animation plays so what we can do over here is grab a node called delay and the duration of the delay can be whatever you want in seconds so let's say we want the duration to be 0.5 and what we do is once this delay is done once it's completed it goes over here and resets this uh, now we've kind of got visual spaghetti it's kind of hard to see so quick little unreal engine tip if you double click these lines you get like this extra little node to help you spread things apart make it easier to see okay let's press compile and save and we'll press play to test it out now you can see I can't just spam the button and it doesn't even have to finish the whole animation, but it has to go at least half a second. Uh, let me show you one more little variable. If it's important to your game that the animation actually finishes before you can do it again, you can actually plug this return value from the animation montage into the duration. And that just makes the delay equal however long the animation is. So if the animation was 10 seconds long, your delay would be 10 seconds. Let's press play, compile and save and we can see it's a little bit slower now. The animation has to actually finish before you can do it again. So if you want kind of a slow ponderous game, um, a lot of times survival horror games are kind of like this because they want to make it actually hard to fight all these zombies, make it feel like real life. So it really depends on the type of game you're trying to make. All right, one last thing I want to show you. If you did download a whole bunch of animations, I want to show you how to make it play all of them uh, randomly. Okay, so to add multiple animations to the attack list, I'm going to go to my blueprint. I just need to duplicate these ones here for each animation that I have. So I've got five of them. So I'm going to click Control D. Notice it's got this little node here that helps us organize. That's nice. 
And for each one in the anim montage, I'm just gonna pick a different one. So that's number two, this is number three, this is number four, and this is number five. And I want each of these to also reset that do once node. So I'm just gonna feed this into reset. At this point, we're really getting some spaghetti here. So if you have more experience with blueprints in Unreal Engine and you know a better way to organize this, leave us a comment, because I really, I really need to know. If you do know blueprints a little bit, you'll see that this isn't really gonna do anything because right now this do once node is only feeding into one of the montages. So we need a way to randomly pick five of them. So between this montage and the do once node, I'm gonna search for a node called multigate. Let's plug this do once out into the multigate. And then here, this first one's gonna go into our first montage. Second one goes into our second montage. We can click this little plus sign to add more. So let's go up to five, perfect. I'm gonna plug these in. And then last little thing on the multi-gate, I'm going to turn on is random so it doesn't go in order. And I'm going to click on loop so when it gets to the end of the list, it doesn't stop. It keeps going back around at the beginning. And we should just be able to hit compile, save. Let's press play and see what it looks like. So there's one. We got a different, ooh, we did like a sword bash. That's pretty cool. Get a little punch in there, like a lower swipe, and then like a really aggressive low swipe. And it'll never play in the same order. Oh, it looks like I've got a delay on there I don't like. So let's go ahead and press escape. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna change my duration for each of these to a number that's shorter than the length of the animation, because it's kind of slow. Let's do like um, three quarters of a second. So I'm just gonna alt click, type 0.75 into each one. And let's see how that feels. So now you can attack a lot quicker. Again, this is just personal preference. Whatever you wanna set it to is up to you. All right, and that's it. Not too complicated. Now he doesn't do any damage when you attack and there's really nobody to attack. So if you want us to get into that, leave a comment below and let us know. And if you use this sword pack in any of your games or films or anything like that, be sure to leave a comment, post on Instagram, tag us, post it on our Discord and let us know. All right, later creators. I'm gonna keep attacking these boxes here.